Quest to Harmony and Freyond and welcome to it in another video. We have found ourselves in very strange times. It seems to me that, uh, as people like to call it, uh, the fandom has been divided into two teams. Two teams that are constantly fighting each other and can't stand one another. And it seems to me that people really like to be divided these days. I'm, of course, in this case, talking about the Lord of the Rings and Prime or the Rings of Power, the upcoming show by Amazon. And there are people, of course, who are absolutely excited about the show and can't wait and are devouring each and every single piece of information that is released by uh, the media. And then there are people like me, who only perceive it as a source of fun and a great source of uh, video content. Now, I've expressed my opinions, my learned opinion about uh, the show in my previous videos. You are free to check them out. I shall post some links in the description down below. Check them out, they are very good videos where I use all my knowledge and all my education concerning old European myths and legends and the fantasy literature and uh, Tolkien uh, specifically. Then. And I thought that in the midst of all this negativity that is being thrown out all over the internet, I shall make a positive video and recommend to you if you haven't read them, but I think that most of my viewers have read those books. Three of my favorite books from Tolkien that are very much different from his canon, from his fantasy canon, from The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit and the Cimmerillion, The, the Unfinished Tales and so on and so forth. Uh, it's got nothing to do with it, maybe just a little bit. One of them does. And uh, they are very much diverse as far as genre goes. And they have influenced me not only in my personal life, but also in my professional life. And I would like to start with um, the essay collection written by Tolkien uh, called The Monsters and the Critics and Other Essays. But I would like to focus on two essays specifically. And one of them is uh, the mon uh, not not uh, actually um, not The Monsters and the Critics, but on Beowulf and on fairy stories. Um, on Fairy Stories is an essay that Tolkien wrote, as the name itself suggests, on fairy stories, on fairy tales, because uh, not only was he a tremendously skilled linguist and a philologist, a master linguist who learned old uh, dead languages and uh, who studied languages historically from the historical perspective, and then, of course, invented his own languages and their historical form or forms, but he was also very much passionate about legends, folklore, myths. And there is one thought, there is one idea among all, among all, you know, all of them, and above all, in this essay that has stuck in my brain and mind, and I have been living by this since I read this essay for the first time, and that's the fact that fairy tales and fairy stories, firstly, should be set in a completely secondary world. Tolkien divides the, the primary world and the secondary world, the primary world being the world that we live in, the, the, the real world, and the secondary world being the fantasy world that people invent, you know, fantasy and science fiction authors invent, in his case, Arda, uh, you know, in which we can find Middle Earth, um, which is basically, uh, once again, an inspiration from old Norse myths, you know, Midgard or Midgard, which in Old English was called Midgardniart, which, of course, when we translate it word to word to modern English, goes as Middle Earth. And it should ideally have nothing to do, no connection with the primary world, with our world. And that's why, I, well, that was one of the things that he disliked about uh, the books of one of his friends, C.S. Lewis. He disliked Narnia because the kids in Narnia got from the primary world to uh, the secondary world, and there was a link between those two worlds, and he didn't like that. And the other thing that I liked about it was the fact that he said that not that, that, that fairy stories are not only for children. Moreover, it's, it is the adults who should enjoy fairy stories more than children. Why? Because we live in reality, we have to deal with the real world each and every day in our lives. And it is adults who need to escape reality and who need help to escape reality. Because children, or at least they used to, they can escape 
the primary world easily. They are always living in the fantasy world, right? But adults need help. So that's why adults need fairy tales, fantasy, legends and myths. And these days we could also include all sorts of films and video games and RPG games, tabletop games, anything that can help us escape the dark and grim and grey Mordor that is called the world. And the other one is um, Beowulf, in which he uh, in length described uh, the um, intricacies of translating the oldest Old English poem, which of course, or epic poem, which of course originally came from uh, Scandinavia and the area of uh, today's Germany, it was brought to Britain by the uh, tribes of Angles and Saxons and Jutes and so on and so forth when they were invading Britain and chasing away the original Celtic population. And it is one of the only extant Old English poem that is directly dealing with pagan matters. And of course, because it was written down for the, you know, for the first time by Anglo-Saxon Anglo monks in Scriptoria, it is highly Christianized. And it is so beautiful uh, in that it combines the old pre-Christian pagan material with the already Christianized ma material that it blends together and is already inseparable. Uh, and this is one of the things that uh, inspired me in my professional career to, among other things, learn some of the dialects of Old English and try to translate some of the Old English poems into, firstly, modern English and then into my own native or you know, native language, mother tongue, Czech, and then to start writing poetry in the Old English alliterative verse which is a specific form of poetry that uh, Beowulf was written in. And there's actually going to be a book of mine published in Czech uh, in a month. And it is uh, a collection of uh, short stories, not short stories, I'm working on that one, uh, poems, alliterative poems and essays on various topics concerning all European myths and the alliterative verse. So this is a highly in influential book. Uh, uh, very um, academic, uh, very scientific, so to speak. Uh, definitely not for everybody, but uh, most certainly for people who are interested in uh, languages, in myths and legends, and fairy stories, and everything that uh, the European Law Channel is concerned with. So I, I definitely do recommend reading uh, The Monsters and The Critics and other essays. The other book is a bit different. A, a completely different, a completely different genre. It's um, the letters from Father Christmas, which is a fairy tale story, right? It is actually a collection of letters that Tolkien wrote himself, and I'm sure most of you know that, for his children when they were young, they were little, uh, and he wrote them before Christmas Day, uh, each and every year, and he gave the postman that brought them their letters some money, to slip the letters in the post box with the other, you know, like le uh, mail that they received. And so then, that's why his kids believed in Santa Claus. And he wrote those letters in forms of stories. And Father Christmas, or Santa Claus, as you call it in the United States of America, um, described various adventures that they had in the North Pole, and he also included his own illustrations. Uh, among other things, Tolkien was uh, a very good uh, painter. You know, this is one of his paintings on the cover. Uh, he could draw and paint very, very well. Uh, and he even wrote some of the letters in runes, as you can see over here. And uh, to demonstrate uh, some of his drawings. Uh, for example, here he depicted uh, like ancient drawings that were drawn on one of the goblin caves that they found. I think it was um, in uh, in you know under the you know the, the North Pole, and this is uh, how one of the, those letters looked like. Tolkien had a very very beautiful handwriting, of course, a lot of people had at the time, and this is one of the drawings or paintings. Once again, very beautifully illustrated book, um, which I reread each and every year before Christmas, and it provides me with uh, a holiday uh, cheer 
and uh, you know the Christmas spirit. So I definitely do recommend uh, Letters from Father Christmas by Tolkien. And the last one is a short one. It's actually a short story. Uh, it's Leave by Niggle. Uh, it has been included in many collections, but this is a version that's just, you know, in one little book or booklet. And it is like completely out of Middle Earth or anything that has anything to do with Tolkien's fantasy stories. It is a short story about a painter who couldn't finish a painting of a tree. And it has fantasy elements. It has Christian elements. Uh, I don't want to spoil much. But just in case. If you don't want to get spoiled. Just don't listen now. The It's got something to do with the afterlife. You know, the tree, painter, afterlife. I'm not going to say any, anything more. The important thing is that it, 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 it is indeed... Probably the best short story I've ever read in my entire life. And I've read like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of short stories. And I'm not saying that because it was written by Tolkien. I'm saying it objectively. It's really good. And I do recommend it. And you can get it for a couple. See, the uh, recommended price is 3 99 UK pounds. So it's very cheap. You can get all these three books in cheap paperbacks. This is a, you know, a like deluxe hardback because I love hardbacks. Um, and I'm sh sh sure you will enjoy at least some of them if you're a fan of Tolkien old stories and myths and legends and language history. Um, so that's definitely the monsters and the critics and all their essays. Letters from Father Christmas and Leaf by Nickel. All right. That is all for now, my friends. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you are going to read any of these books, or if you uh, have any other books that you would like to recommend to me or to other viewers in the comments down below that were written either by Tolkien or by somebody else that you consider to be, you know, read. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for watching. That will be all. And now, Maria.